Welcome to explainingthefuture.com. This time I'm going to talk about mining the moon for helium-3 as a fuel for clean nuclear power. Almost inevitably, this topic is a complex one and requires some understanding of the involved nuclear physics, future space exploration and the global politics of securing future energy supplies. Starting with the physics, current nuclear power stations are based on a process called nuclear fission. This releases energy by splitting a uranium nucleus into fragments, thereby also producing radioactivity and nuclear waste. However, the potential exists to replace nuclear fission reactors with those based on the nuclear fusion process that fuels the sun. This could involve fusing together the nuclei of tritium and deuterium to release energy and helium in a clean nuclear reaction. However, a so-called fast neutron is also released and which poses energy loss and containment problems that currently prevent nuclear fusion power generation. Some scientists, however, believe that future clean nuclear reactors could be based on a neutronic fusion in which deuterium and helium-3 are fused together in a reaction that releases energy and only results in normal helium and a proton. However, one of the major problems here is obtaining a supply of helium-3. On Earth, helium-3 is a very, very rare gas indeed, with only a few kilograms a year created as the byproduct of maintaining nuclear weapons. Helium-3 is, however, emitted by the sun. And whilst our atmosphere prevents any of this arriving on the Earth, the lunar soil has been absorbing helium-3 for billions of years. There are therefore believed to be over one million tonnes of helium-3 on the surface of the Moon. This could potentially be extracted by heating the lunar dust to around 600 degrees, before bringing it back to the Earth to fuel a new generation of nuclear reactors. A full Space Shuttle cargo bay, or about 25 tonnes of helium-3, could power the United States for a year. This means that helium-3 has an economic value of at least $3 billion a tonne, and which makes extracting it from the Moon economically viable. Interest in going to the Moon to mine helium-3 is also significant. In 2006, Russian Space Corporation Energia reported plans to establish a permanent moon base by 2015 and to be mining helium-3 on an industrial scale by 2020. The United States is also returning to the moon, with NASA having the intention of a base on one of the moon's poles by 2024 and where helium-3 is known to be concentrated. China is also planning to put a man on the moon by 2017, with their mission to measure the thickness of the lunar soil and the amount of helium-3 present. The most staggering thing here is not the nuclear physics or the space exploration but the lack of reporting of helium-3 as a potential future energy source. Indeed, the fact that several nations have already committed billions of dollars to lunar helium-3 projects should surely be very big news indeed, regardless of whether their plans actually come to fruition. Nobody is trying to hide the potential of mining helium-3 on the moon. However, in the face of global warming and dwindling fossil fuel supplies, it is surely a subject that demands greater public attention. To get yourself more informed, you can read the Helium-3 Power Facts file on explainingthefuture.com. But now that's it for another video, and remember, the future is in your hands.